when we want to animate a character in Unreal Engine 5, we have a lot of tools available within the Anim instance based system that the engine provides. This system can be used to drive player and NPC animation alike, and while it is relatively performant, it is bound by the CPU and cannot scale to animate truly massive numbers of characters. This is where the new Turbo Sequence plugin comes in. It's a free and open source plugin for Unreal Engine that renders skeletal meshes and animation using GPU instancing, allowing for tens of thousands of characters to be animated on screen at the same time through GPU instancing. GPU instancing is a method of rendering where multiple copies of the same mesh with different transformations and materials can be rendered using a single draw call. This is much more efficient than Unreal Engine's standard pipeline for rendering animated characters where each skeletal mesh is sent to the GPU separately in sequence. GPU instancing works by using a type of shader that can apply different transformations and materials to each instance being rendered. This is how Turbo Sequence manages to track and animate thousands of characters within a much more efficient number of draw calls. Some of you may be aware of Unreal Engine's Vertex Animation Texture System, which was used recently to animate the crowds in the Matrix Awakens demo. Comparing it to Turbo Sequence, some key differences are revealed. Much functionality present in the Anim instance based pipeline is completely inaccessible when using vertex animation textures. Turbo Sequence was built with the mission to combine animation quality with modern rendering, which means that many pre existing animation features can be used with it, such as IK, root motion, animation blending, animation bone layer blending the tweaking of animation speeds, weights, and other associated values, level of detail, sockets, multi-mesh support, blend spaces, updates groups, tracking of animation curve data, and finally, a hybrid mode where an anim instance driven skeletal mesh can be swapped for a turbo sequence mesh when it is a certain distance from the player. To use Turbo Sequence in your own projects, you can download the plugin from the GitHub repository linked in the description below. Once downloaded, you can extract the plugin files into the plugins folder for the Unreal Engine project that you wish to use the plugin in. With the Unreal Engine 5 mannequin. I'll go ahead and make my way into the file that contains the material that is being applied to the mannequin. Now, because the turbo sequence system runs on the GPU, we need to make some modifications to the material being used so that turbo sequence can animate the mesh through its material on the GPU properly. I'll go ahead and duplicate this material here and I'll name it M underscore mannequin underscore turbo sequence. There are three steps that we'll need to take for any material we make that uses turbo sequence. The first is to get a turbo sequence position offset node. This should then be plugged into the world position offset output pin for the material. Next, Turbo Sequence manages normals a bit differently than the normal engine systems do, and so for those to function properly, we'll need to use a Turbo Sequence normal material function as well. I'll go ahead and type Turbo Sequence into the search, and we can see that there are a variety of normal handling methods. I'm going to choose tangent space normal, and this is what you'll want to use in most cases if you previously were just using a standard normal map. I'll go ahead and plug what used to be our normal output into this turbo sequence node, and I will then plug the turbo sequence node into the normal output pin for this material. Finally, turbo sequence uses Niagara static meshes 
to render the instances, which means that the material needs to have the Niagara Mesh Particle Render feature enabled. I'll go ahead and search Particle in the Details panel and set the Used with Niagara Meshed Particles setting to True. With that complete, I'll go ahead and save this material. Those are all the changes that we needed to make. These two nodes and enabling the Niagara Mesh Particles setting. And those three steps are what you'll need to take when creating your own material or modifying an existing material to make use of Turbo Sequence. I'll go ahead and close out of the material now and we can see that we have this new material here. I'll go ahead and make my way over into the Meshes folder and we're going to set this up with the SKM Manny Skeletal Mesh. I'll go ahead and click into the mesh and I'll bring it over onto this monitor and now we can see it is actually referencing material instances that have already been created. So I'm going to go ahead and find these instances and I'm going to open up both of these. For each of these instances, I'm going to replace the parent material with the new turbo sequence material that we created. And then I'll save each of these. And the Manny 02 instance actually looks like it was referencing the Manny 01 instance. So we only had to change the parent material in the Manny 01 instance. Now that this has been done, we can move on to the next step. We'll need to open up the Turbo Sequence Control Panel. We'll do that through this drop down menu at the top of the editor window here. With this open, it actually gives us a walkthrough of the steps that we'll need to take to get this all set up and working. Now, Turbo Sequence actually requires its own mesh type to function properly, and the Turbo Sequence Control Panel will set that asset up using the skeletal mesh that we provide. I'll go ahead and click into this window here and create a new turbo sequence mesh asset in the content browser. And I'll go ahead and navigate into the mannequin character folder, create a new folder, and I'll just name it turbo sequence. And I'll create this turbo sequence mesh asset and I'll name it TS underscore Manny. With that created, we can move on to the next section. Now I'll go ahead and choose the SKM Manny Skeletal Mesh. And next we can generate the level of detail meshes from it for Turbo Sequence to use. I'll click it. And next I'll need to navigate through the folders and into that Turbo Sequence folder that I previously created. I'll select it. And now the editor is going to generate the level of detail meshes that Turbo Sequence will use. This might take a few minutes. Okay, the engine has finished up creating the level of detail meshes so we can move on to the next section. Next, we need to generate the global texture, which saves the current bone bending of all instances on the map, no matter if they are on the same mesh or not. This texture is required for translating the bone data from the compute shader which calculates the bone matrices into the pixel or vertex shader, the actual material where Turbo Sequence can deform the mesh vertices. So we'll need to make sure that the max amount of instances is set to a number that will support the size of the crowd that we wish to render. I'm going to leave these settings at their defaults and I'm going to click the Generate Texture button. With that done, we can go ahead and close out of the control panel. Now let's take a look at what this turbo sequence mesh asset looks like. I'll go ahead and navigate into the folder where I've previously created it. And I'll open it up. And we can see here everything that was configured by the control panel. I'll go ahead and save the asset and close out of it. Now with that setup done, all we have to do is to place a Turbo Sequence Manager asset into the world to start using Turbo Sequence. There is a Manager asset that has already been created in the Resources folder of the Turbo Sequence plugin folder, and we can use it to test the mesh that we set up. I'll drag it in, 
and I'll fill in its settings. We need to supply our turbo sequence mesh as well as the animation that we wish to play. I'll choose the walk forward animation. With those two settings set, I'll go ahead and click play. And now we have a turbo sequence mesh animated inside of this level. Turbo sequence has a scripting API that is accessible in Blueprint and C++ that can be used to set up the logic for turbo sequence managers. It is through the scripting of these turbo sequence managers that we're able to play animations, blend them, use blend spaces, inverse kinematics, so on and so forth within turbo sequence. It is recommended that you use the C++ API instead of the blueprint API because it is much, much more performant. The actual setup needed to get things up and running is relatively minimal and pretty easy to grasp in both blueprints and C++. If we look at the CPP file, that is given as an example here, we can see that a few things need to happen. On begin play, we need to add a skinned mesh instance to the game thread for each skinned mesh that we want this manager to control. We need to supply spawn data, which is the turbo sequence mesh that we previously created, an actor transform, and the world that this mesh is being spawned into. With that finished, we can then tell turbo sequence to play an animation on the instance. This instance is an output of the previous function. We pass in the input data, the turbo sequence mesh, actor transform, and world, and we get out the instance that was spawned, so we can then pass that into a play animation concurrent function. To have turbo sequence know that it needs to update the state of things, play animations, and all that kind of stuff on a frame by frame basis and event tick, we need to tell turbo sequence to solve the meshes on the game thread by passing in delta time, get world, and an update context struct, which is a struct of settings for how turbo sequence updates everything. Let's go ahead and look at what I set up in Blueprints, and I'll show you how the same exact functions are being called over in Blueprint. So here I set up a relatively simple manager. This inherits directly from the Turbo Sequence Manager class. The same is going to be true for any C++ Sequence Manager you'll create. You'll be inheriting from this class or something else adjacent to it. Again, I have not looked into this in great depth before recording the video. I plan to look into it more in the future, but I did want to go ahead and make a video to show you guys this awesome plugin. So here I am adding the skinned mesh instance to the game thread, and I'm just passing in this root motion mesh, which is our turbo sequence mesh type. I have not looked into using customizable meshes yet, so I can't speak much to that, but this functions properly without anything being inside of this array. Next, we add the mesh to an updates group. Between these two, I did keep track of an array and I did add each instance we're spawning to it. I think there's probably a better way to keep track of all the instances or access them as an array in the system. I just haven't spent enough time with the API and looking into things to know what that is yet. And I just put this blueprint together as a very quick initial test. Finally, I call that same play animation concurrent function and pass in an animation sequence. And this is exposed to be instance editable. So it can be edited when we drag the manager into the world. Everything after is surrounding logic that I'll touch on in a moment. Off of event tick, the thing I want to draw your attention to is that we are solving the meshes on the game thread with that same function as what we called in C++. Everything else here is custom logic. I'm keeping track of an instance number and I'm tying that to this for loop. So we iterate for each instance we want to spawn in the world. We calculate a transform based on an X value and a calculated Y value that is occurring per row of a grid de determined by this counter. So what's happening here is that I'm trying to spawn all these meshes in a grid. To determine where we're at in any given row of the grid, we track this counter variable and iterate it after we add an instance right here. Once we're done iterating it, we add one and check if that's greater than the square root of the instance number. 
This is some very fragile math here and it'll break down if the wrong numbers are used for the instance number, but again, I just wanted to check this out. So if this is greater than the square root, then we know that we are at the end of a grid row of a perfectly square grid. So we reset the counter and increment this x float value by the instance grid offset, which is also exposed as an instance editable variable. And it's the difference in position between each point on the grid. So back here, we see that x is input into the x. And so the x determines the row of the grid. And then the y determines the column. And the column, we reset every time the counter reaches the end of the row as determined by this equation here. Finally, for each mesh in the array that I mentioned earlier, we move the mesh with its root motion data pulled from the animation that it is playing. All of that put together in play looks like this. A grid of turbo sequence meshes walking forward using root motion. I have our mannequin mesh selected as well as the walk forward animation that comes with a third person template pack, as well as an instance number of 100 and an instance grid offset of 100. We can't increase this number, but we drop frames pretty fast using the blueprint API and the C++ API is much more performant. There's a thousand and we can take it up to 10,000. But when I did try this earlier, it did definitely run a little bit slower and you can definitely see. And uh, C++, I believe, would have a much better, would do a much better job of dealing with this number of meshes. And there are some more detailed instructions for optimization over on the GitHub repository documentation. I'm going to end out the video here. The creator of this plugin does have a Discord that's linked in the description. Definitely go join and check it out. And finally... I want to thank all of my supporters over on patreon.com forward slash outcast dev school for their continued support of the channel. If you'd like to support the channel, you can join and you can gain early access to the videos I put up on the channel as well as access to download the project files for the tutorials I create. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.